Sup witches! So today I'm going to talk about grey witchcraft. I myself am a grey witch, so I wanted to explain what grey witchcraft is to me and how I practice it, and also what kind of um, general consensus would be for uh, a stereotype, if you will, of grey witchcraft as a whole. So how I would define grey witchcraft is honoring and meditating on the complexities in yourself, nature, and the universe around you, and finding the balancing point between all of it. There's also this sense of morality with grey witchcraft, because grey witches do honor both white and black magic, helpful and baneful magic. A very popular philosophy among grey witchcraft practitioners is the ideology that you cannot heal unless you know how to harm. Um, I think this is because to understand magic in a more well-rounded way, and to understand how the universe works in a more well-rounded way, you really should understand the complexities between light and dark, good and evil, chaos and order, things of that nature. To a grey witch, Right and wrong isn't so clear-cut, and good versus evil is not so clear-cut. Um, for example, helpful magic might actually hinder somebody, and baneful magic might actually help somebody. One of my favorite examples of this is in Disney's Beauty and a Beast. And um, the Enchantress at the beginning puts a curse on the beast and turns him into this monstrous form, but it's to teach him a lesson, and by the end of the movie, he's better off for it. So we have these situations where, you know, nothing is really black and white, and there's a lot of gray area in between. So here, I can't really speak for all gray witches, but I would say the majority of gray witches do not believe in the law of three. Personally, I don't necessarily believe in the Law of Three, um, but for people who do believe in the Law of Three, I don't think Grey Witchcraft is not available to you. I think maybe looking at things through the lens of Grey Witchcraft might help you better plan your spells, understanding the complexities in between hindering and, and um, helping might help you understand the effects of your spells a little bit better, and thus helping you keep the Law in 3 in check. Okay, so one thing I want to touch upon here is answering the question, are Grey Witches bad people because they cast both helpful and baneful magic? I think the answer is yes and no. Well, it kind of goes back to what is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. I think that good and bad is a lot of perception. So what is good for me might be bad for somebody else. For example, if I'm being harassed, my family's being harassed, and I decide to cast a binding spell or a banishing spell, taking away someone's free will and, you know, directing them not to come towards me or my family, it's bad that I took away their free will, but it's good because I'm protecting my family. So there's a lot of these strange little complexities, kind of like doing bad things for the right reasons. Um, I don't like to look at things as good or bad because of this. Um, as far as are Grey Witches good people or bad people, I like to view people as healthy and then toxic. Now, I think toxic people can cast very helpful magic, and I think that non-toxic people can cast baneful magic. It really goes down to intention. What are your intentions here? As for myself, I'm a very kind-natured person. I really don't like to hurt people. I'm not very aggressive, especially with magic. I've never been in a position where I have felt the need to harm people, and I feel very blessed for that because there are situations out there where you either need to defend yourself or stand up for yourself, 
and I've never gotten to that extreme in my life where I needed to harm somebody through magic. I will, however, perhaps do some manipulative spells, do spells that take away free will. Um, I've done sweetening jars, bindings, banishings, and I think at face value you wouldn't really think of these spells as being uh, baneful, but a lot of the uh, white magic practitioners have rules or moral obligations not to take away free will. It's kind of a taboo among white magic practitioners. So a lot of people categorize that as black magic. So it's technically black magic, but for good purposes. Um, I've never cast spells to actually bring pain and suffering to people, but there are people who do. Within Grey Witchcraft, there is this huge theme of contemplating what is right, what is wrong. You know, helpful magic isn't always helpful and baneful magic isn't always baneful. Um, one question that I like to ask is, is it wrong to cast a curse of impotence or worse on somebody who rapes children. Personally, I don't think that's so bad. I really don't. There, there are complexities where I do believe that using black magic is the best option. Um, I mean, in physical reality, in, in things that are physical, people argue, should we do chemical castration? for rapists and the such. So, I mean, we even see this outside of the magical realm. Sometimes there is a struggle within Grey Witchcraft, at least for me, I can't speak for everybody, but to navigate those waters, those murky grey waters. So, one thing I do to keep myself straight is I always try to cast magic responsibly. We talked a little bit about health and toxicity. I'm very much so into psychology and one of the biggest themes in my life is staying mentally healthy. So I try to stay extremely self-aware of my thoughts and my actions when I'm planning a spell. Um, I don't like to cast spells with malice. I don't think being a malicious person or a power-hungry person is what's healthy for me. Um, I don't think that being either is going to help me grow as a person. So every single time I cast a spell, I try to take stock of my emotions and say, am I casting this for the right or the wrong reasons? And that's my line of morality. So at the end of the day, I really don't think that just because you're a great witch or you cast baneful magic that you're inherently a bad person. Just as I don't think that if you're a white witch, you're not inherently a bad person, or the vice versa. It's very murky waters, and that's a big part of grey witchcraft, is understanding that these waters be murky. The line of morality that I talked about, that's personal to me and Minecraft. That is not the consensus for all grey witchcraft. There are witches out there who will absolutely cast spells with malice or to gain power, they'll cast spells to send harm to people physically and mentally, to make people sick, take away their luck. There are so many curses. You can find them all over the internet, all over books. Um, I do have to honor that this is a way of casting magic. It's a practice. These spells exist and they're in use almost every day. I also want to say what other witches are casting are none of my business, unless they're being directed at me, in which case then it's absolutely my business. Other than that, um, people are going to practice however they want to practice, and I need to honor that there are dark witches and light witches and then witches in between and gray witches who might be a little bit darker gray or gray witches who might be a little bit lighter gray. Everybody is different. Everyone practice, practices the craft in their own specific way. 
and you know you can only worry about your personal craft so that being said I just wanted to share my path as far as gray witchcraft goes and I could talk about this forever but I feel like this is already gonna be kind of longer so I'm gonna cut it here I would really appreciate if you guys would subscribe because I'd love to grow my channel I have a lot of fun doing this and I feel like I'm gonna meet a lot of really cool people um, so yeah that's it that's it for me happy casting everybody